In the 4th through the 6th century, there was what's called canonical penance. And it was a time when uh, those serious sins were governed or watched over by um, the clergy, not just the bishop. Um, governed by the clergy. And uh, still very serious. But again, keep in mind that if at the very beginning of here, uh, penance was only allowed to be, you were only allowed to receive the sacrament of penance, as it was named, only once after baptism. So think about it. If I could only receive, or let's use the language, go to confession once after being baptized, I'm an adult, what usually happened? And I knew that that's my only chance to go to confession. What, would, what happened with the sacrament, do you think? Death Deathbed. That's right. People waited. I'm not going to go. I'm 35 years old. I was baptized a year ago. I just committed this grave act. Now I'm in this order of penitence. You know, maybe I don't want to do it right now. Let me wait. Because I can only receive it once. So I waited till I'm on my deathbed. That is so important because it began to, people stopped receiving it. There was, um, they would wait. And so to this day, why people will use the language. Father Danny, I'm dying, my dad's dying, my brother's dying, and they need to receive the last rites. This was considered part of the last rites, going to confession, because I want to die knowing that I have confessed and I've been forgiven. Because I don't want to take the chance that, you know, and then it would be the chance of, and certainly, you know, medical technology, we live longer and all this kind of stuff, but in those days, I mean, people died. And so, call the priest. Have him come, bless you, if I can confess my sins, etc. Very, very different way of experiencing the sacrament in the early church. Um, in the 7th to the 12th century, there began the monastic influence of how this was very public. The first, three, first six centuries, it was a very public way of, of uh, celebrating penance. Very public and still very rigorous. The monastic influence from the 7th to the 12th century at thereabout, where monks had what were called penitential manuals. They had a book, and in the book, it had <coughs> infidelity. <coughs> Penance will be this. This sin, penance will be, it was a manual. This is what you do. Uh, this is how you celebrate the penance with people. You not only list the sins, and if you ever, if you're a person of a scholarly type and you ever want to read interesting books, the penitential manuals, the, the monks had quite wild imagination because they thought of all kinds of sins. <laughs> And literally, if you ever read some of those, you go, wow. I don't know if I would want that job in the monastery. But, but they had a manual. The other thing that was so significant about the influence of the, of the Irish uh, monks in that time, this was when we began to see the shift or change from where penance was at one time very public and rigorous, became very private and very spiritual engaging. For now, when you came to reconciliation, monks were celebrating the sacrament in the monastery with one another. People began to lay to, began to hear about it, so they started going to the monastery. I want to go to Father So-and-so. And they would sit down with Father So-and-so and confess their sins, and then the priest, the monk, would start telling them spiritually how to overcome some of those things or work through some of those difficulties that they were having. So that counseling began to surface. <coughs> very, very different 
than from those first six centuries. So penance began to shift from something that was very public to very private, to very private. And in a sense, that whole anonymous nature of the sacrament, um, that secret aspect began to occur. Um, after around the 13th century, then you had the influence of a lot of the, the real scholars of the church. Um, I mentioned earlier, someone like Thomas Aquinas, uh, St. Albert the Great, Bonaventure. They all began to formulate different models of the sacrament of penance. What they ultimately, um, at the Council of Trent in 1545 um, to 1563, that was the church's response. Up until the Council of Trent, there might have been some order of how the sacrament was celebrated, but there was no complete uniformity within the church worldwide. So at the Council of Trent, because the Protestant reformers were saying, you don't need that, you need to change that, why do we have that? It was the church's time to be able to officially say, this is what we believe in. And in realms of the sacrament, it's also the time when the church first said, scripturally, penance is founded. And it defined that what the sacrament of penance, or as we've come to know it, reconciliation is. It also said that priests have the power, are given the power through ordination to forgive sins, etc., etc. Um, those are important times, because prior to that, People were probably doing it different ways.